so we saw that any color can be distinguishably characterized by three of its attributes and that is brightness hue and saturation now hue and saturation taken together are called as chromaticity so the previous statement can be uh, reiterated in terms of chromaticity as that any color can be char characterized by its brightness and chromaticity so why do so because chromaticity itself contains the hue and saturation attribute so that together with the additionally brightness attribute can totally determine the color distinguishably so we can again say that brightness and chromaticity can together are the attributes to distinguishably characterize any color here we have a another definition uh, the definition about tristimulus values okay so what is tristimulus tristimulus values the amount of red green and blue required to form any particular color are called the tristimulus values and are denoted as capital x capital y and capital z respectively so what are the tristimulus values it is these are the amounts of red green and blue needed to form a particular color okay so how much red is required that is denoted by capital x how much green is required that is denoted by capital y and how much blue is required that is denoted by capital z it is then so that a color can be specified by its trichromatic coefficients which is defined in terms of the tristimulus values for the particular color so what is then trichromatic coefficient trichromatic coefficient uh, coefficients give the relative amount of red green and blue to give you a particular color so these are give the the tri trichromatic coefficients are given respectively by small x small y and small x small z so these small x y small y and small z are the relative amount of the red green and blue okay the absolute values absolute amount of red green and blues were denoted by capital x capital y and capital z whereas the relative amount is being called as the trichromatic coefficients so how how it is defined the small x the relative amount of the red is given by the absolute amount of x divided by sum of absolute values of red green and blue so small x the trichromatic coefficient small x with respect to red is given as capital x divided by capital x plus capital y plus capital z capital z so similarly the trichromatic coefficient corresponding to the color green denoted by small y is given by capital y divided by capital x plus capital y plus capital z and finally the trichromatic coefficient corresponding to the color blue is denoted by small z and that is equal to capital z divided by capital x plus capital y plus capital z and uh, since small x small y and small z which are the trichromatic coefficients corresponding to red green and blue uh, these are the relative amounts of the three different uh, color contributions it has to be so that the sum of all these relative amounts has to be equals to 1 that is small x plus small y plus small z has to be equals to 1 this means that if you know two of the trichromatic coefficients you can always find out the third trichromatic coefficient if you know uh, trichromatic coefficients corresponding to green and blue then you can definitely find out x as 1 minus y plus z so another way of uh, specifying the colors is cie chromaticity diagram in this diagram we have the referred chromaticity coefficient x on the x axis and the referred 
trichromaticity coefficient y on the y axis. So x is basically the trichromatic coefficient corresponding to red. Y is the trichromatic coefficient corresponding to green. And there is no requirement to explicitly uh, have, a note, have a representation or have, or have the uh, component for the z trichromatic coefficient because z is quite implied in this xy representation. How it is implied? It is implied. It is implied because once you know the x contribution and y contribution, you know that z contribution is simply is equals to 1 minus the x plus y. So there is no requirement of explicit uh, z axis uh, in this uh, chromaticity diagram representation. And, sin, and still uh, we have uh, the knowledge of x, y and z included in this chromaticity diagram representation. So x axis, uh, this is starting from 0 at origin and increasing like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 up to towards 1. And again, uh, on the y axis, the chromaticity coefficient corresponding to green, it is starting from 0 at origin to 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 and towards here. So now, you can locate the violet color as which is 380 nanometer of wavelength somewhere here at this corner of the tongue shaped chromaticity diagram and the color red it is of 780 nanometer wavelength it is it has been located here okay and you will see that any color which is located on the boundary of this chromaticity diagram are the colors which we can uh, which we can say that they are saturated colors okay any color that is located on the boundary of this chromaticity diagram are saturated colors so for uh, any color suppose we choose a color here which is uh, in the shade of red the dominant wavelength is corresponding to the red color so if from this point if i move towards the interior of this chromaticity diagram the saturation level is decreasing if i move in a straight line from the boundary towards the interior we are i am basically decreasing the saturation level of that particular hue corresponding to this point where we started uh, we can talk about any color that we that is located at the boundary suppose this is the most saturated so from here if i'll move towards the uh, interior in a straight line i am again decreasing the saturation level there is a so saturation level decreasing means i am increasing the contribution of white light to that particular hue so at somewhere here there is a point there is a point where the contribution of the three primary colors green blue and red is such that there is it equal contribution of red green and blue and that point is gives you the color white and that point is called as the point of equal energy and that color that point corresponds to the white color in this chromaticity diagram, it is quite a helpful tool to uh, get an idea what all are the different color shades that you can produce by mixture in different proportions of any three different colors. Suppose you choose a color, uh, suppose you choose a color uh, somewhere here and you choose another color somewhere here and you choose some another color somewhere here so you want to know what all are the all color shades that you can produce by different combinations of this color this color and this color then what you need to do is you you need to draw straight lines from here to this point from this point to the next point 
uh, this has to be a straight lines uh, mine may not look like a straight line but you need to draw a straight line another straight line you draw and you need to draw from here to this point so the triangle the triangular region that is included inside this uh, triangle including the boundary uh, represents all the color shades that can be produced by different combinations of the three colors at the vertices chosen at the vertices of this triangle so different proportions of the three colors at the vertices can be combined in different proportions to get all the colors and those colors are well within inside the triangular region any point in the region can be produced in such a manner.